Hi class, a pleasant day to all of you. This is your Prof. Sir Dan, and in this video, we are going to discuss Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, and the acronym is GAAP. What is GAAP? GAAP helps govern the world of accounting according to general rules and guidelines. It attempts to standardize and regulate the definitions, assumptions, and methods used in accounting across all industries. GAAP covers such topics as revenue recognition, balance sheet classification, and materiality. Class, GAAP would put certain rules and regulations so that financial statements of every company can be understood in the same page, okay? A GAAP a goal is to ensure a company's financial statements are complete, consistent, and comparable. This makes it easier for investors to analyze and extract useful information from the company's financial statements, including trend data over a period of time. It also facilitates the comparison of financial information across different companies. Class, the implementation of GAAP is that every country has its own generally accepted accounting principles. However, all countries have some basic foundations in the development of the accepted accounting principles. Okay, class? Like in the Philippines, okay, uh, we have a set of uh, guidelines, okay? There are several uh, guidelines that was set by the Accountancy Board, okay? So these guidelines have to be observed by all companies in the Philippines irrespective of the type of operations, okay? So class, what are the basic examples of generally accepted accounting principles? There are several accounting principles, okay, developed uh, by the accountancy. However, these are the basic, and we are going to discuss only the basic generally accepted accounting principles for this subject. The first one is business entity principle. Business entity principle would mean that the business should, ha should have a distinct and separate personality. What does it mean? It means that we, have not, we should not commingle the assets of the business with the assets of the owner. Okay, The business has its own personality and the owner has its own, okay? So the uh, recording of transactions should be maintained separately. Separate uh, transactions for the business and the recording and separate set of books. And of course, it has to be separated with the owner. If the owner has several companies, then uh, the uh, recording of transactions should be maintained on each company. And the next is going concern principle. Going concern principle, it means that if you are going to set up a business, your uh, mindset is that the business will continue to exist indefinitely. It is not like, okay, I will set up the business, then after uh, three months, I'm going to close it. That's not the uh, principles of uh, accounting in terms of uh, continuity to exist uh, indefinitely. Next is monetary measurement principle. Every transaction that the business should record should have a monetary value. And if you are using uh, the currency peso, then you have to record everything in peso. Okay, if you are... Uh, currency in your transaction is in dollars, then you have to record it in dollars, okay? However, all the things that the business should record should have a monetary value. It has to have an amount, okay? Next is exchange price or cost principle. 
In recording transactions, we have to observe this principle, uh, which means that the things that we are buying should be uh, recorded on the uh, amount that we have paid for the item. For example, uh, we are buying a car, okay, and the car, uh, the regular price of the car is one million. However, because uh, the owner is your friend, he gave you a discount of one hundred thousand, okay. So in this situation, you have to record the car at nine hundred thousand, okay, not one million, because. We have uh, a principle of the uh, exchange price, which is the actual value that we have to use in the recording the transaction. Next is objectivity principle. Objectivity principle means that we have to record the transaction based on supporting documents. We cannot record a transaction without the document that will support it. If we want to record uh, the purchase of the car, then we have to have the invoice to demonstrate that there was really a purchase and the car is there. Next is reporting period. Each company should have a record of transactions or prepare the financial statements for all the transactions at least annually. Okay? So, uh, this is... Uh, the requirement of the uh, presentation of financial statements should be at least annually. However, the company can uh, present financial statements on a monthly basis on or semi-annual basis. Okay, it depends. However, uh, the requirement is that uh, financial statements has have to be prepared annually, at least annually. And in the preparation of financial statements, the company can observe a calendar period, meaning that one year is from January 1st to December 31st. And also, they have an option to uh, have the uh, reporting period using fiscal accounting period, which means that any day uh, of the uh, year, uh, they will start any day of the year, then end uh, one year from that date. Like, for example, if, you, uh, if companies will choose uh, October 1st as the beginning of the reporting period, then one year from October 1st will be September 30 of the following year. Okay? So that is the fiscal period. Uh, the reason why some com companies observe fiscal period is because of the nature of their operations okay for example like if you are in school you want to capture the enrollment period okay so uh, it depends on the nature of the operations of the business next is accrual or matching principle in this you have to recognize your sales revenue when you earned it and you have to recognize your expenses when you incurred it, whether it is paid or not. Okay? So uh, you have to match the corresponding sales and the corresponding expenses with the corresponding period that you have earned it with respect to sales and you have incurred it with respect to expenses. Next is consistency principle. Consistency principle ensure comparability and consistency. You have to make sure that uh, your financial statements are uh, presented uh, on the same uh, principles that, or in the same um, uh, guidelines. Okay, uh, for like for um, if you are using. Uh, a certain method of inventory from last year, then that method of inventory should also be used for this year. If you are using uh, a, dep a depreciation method, uh, a certain depreciation method from last year, then that the same depreciation method should be used in this year. Okay? However, if you are going to change 
then you have to make sure that the previous year for comparison purposes should likewise be presented based on the change that you have made. Okay? Next is conservatism principle. Conservatism is an accurate presentation of revenues and expenses and uh, to provide sound assumptions and estimates. This sound assumption should be based on conservatism. Like, for example, because there are certain uh, transactions in accounting that you are going to use an estimate, like um, the receivables that you cannot collect. Okay? You are going to make an estimate because it's uh, not actual. So, if you are making an estimate, then you have to be conservative. Okay? And next is that materiality principle. Materiality principle is that you have to make sure that you are going to report transactions that will provide significant impact in your financial statements. Okay? So you have to observe that. However, if there is a certain difference like the value is only 10 pesos or 50 pesos, then it is not material to the operations. Materiality depends. We are measuring here the value of the transactions that uh, is affected. Okay? If it will affect the financial statements. Okay? So that is the materiality principle. So, of course, the value... Uh, depends on the uh, nature and uh, um, the, the volume of operations of the business. For example, if the business assets is uh, in billions, then uh, you might say that 10,000 transaction would not affect the the company okay however the financial statements of the company however if the volume of transaction is only uh, 100,000 then the 10,000 transaction is uh, would affect have give an uh, a significant impact in the reporting of the financial statements of the company next is full disclosure principle in this principle uh, we have to make sure that we have to disclose information of future events that have material impact on the financial statements. What are these? For example, if there is a pending case, okay, and we are not certain whether that particular case will uh, provide a favorable um, result or not to the company, then we have to make a disclosure on that in the financial statements. Okay, class? So, that are some examples of the generally accepted accounting principles. So, if you have questions, please let me know. Just uh, transmit your questions either in your school book or in MS Teams. Bye for now.